This thing is called the moment of inertia. And so let me draw a picture of that. Let's say in one case, I give you a, a hollow tube with almost all of the mass concentrated in the center. And in the second case, I give you a sealed hollow tube where half of this mass, let's say that's about half of it, is over here. And the other half of the mass is basically over here. So it's completely hollow here, uh, uh, but only has the mass concentrated at the ends. This one is gonna be very easy to rotate. I think you can visualize that. This one with a really, really heavy mass uh, toward the end is gonna be much, much, much harder to rotate. So this one is gonna be easy, and this is gonna be hard to rotate about this axis. Notice I have to define some axis, okay? And so what this means is that this is a low moment of inertia, I, and this is a high moment of inertia, I. I mean, it's the same concept as mass. If I tell you I have a low mass, what does it mean? Easy to move. Well, here, I have a low moment of inertia, easy to move. Here, I have a high moment of inertia, easy to move, but they're both, in this case, five kilograms, let's say. They have the same mass. So when things are rotating, it doesn't just depend on how massive it is. It depends on how the mass is distributed. Regular mass, m, when I push it, it's very hard to get moving, right? And that's what it means, it has a high inertia. High moment of inertia means it's hard to get rotating, right? Very low moment of inertia means it's very easy to rotate. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.